So I'm going to give it one final push. We're going to get in there as close as we can, and I'm going to see if I can make it to 200. <clears throat> I can't do it. It's burning my hand. Just imagine touching that with your bare hands. It is very, very hot. We're getting closer. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're back here at Centralia, Pennsylvania to do an update to see how much has changed, not only the town of Centralia, but Graffiti Highway itself. Last time I was here, I flew the drone over Graffiti Highway. It was about halfway covered with dirt. Since that time, people have reached out to me and said it's completely covered now. So we're gonna see it for our very own eyes, both on land and we're gonna put the drone up in the air one more time. I'm also not alone today. I do have a special guest. None other than the Retromantic. I'm here! She is here. She came all the way from North Carolina to explore different parts of Pennsylvania to do some different collaborations. Of course, her channel will be linked down below in the description. You can see her content. I encourage you to, subscri to subscribe. She does some pretty awesome stuff. It's also her first time here too, so I'm going to show her some kind of different highlights of Centralia itself. So if you'd like to join us, all you have to do is come along with us. So after being back here after a few months, I did notice that not only is there a lot less people here, but a lot less cars on the road. Nearly all the areas are posted for no parking. So keep that in mind if you come here. There's still some places you could park, but I would not park along the main roadway here. Behind the scenes, JP videos at work. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna cross over here. All right, come on. All right, so this is the beginning of Graffiti Highway, Route 61, formerly known as, and it is no more. It is buried. There's still some patches of it over there. But like I said, we're gonna put up the drone in the air. I do have the Blue Jay with me. We'll get some aerial views. That's almost depressing to see it. Why is it like humps of dirt? Okay, so to be respectful, we're not gonna go down the humps of dirt here and walk on the former highway. It is posted, we are gonna be respectful. So the best way to view it is gonna be from the air. So the next segment right now is gonna be the drone footage. So let's check that out.
Okay, so as you can see, we got some people that are arriving too, taking pictures for themselves. Ellen got some pictures and photos, uh, videos, and also hopefully you guys enjoyed the drone footage. That is pretty much the best and safest way to experience Graffiti Highway now, or what's left of it anyways. I'm going to be taking her to show her some other areas of Centralia where the playground used to be, the church, and some pockets of steam, and the geyser off a of big mine run road. So even though you guys have seen those already, it's going to be her first time, so I will just give you a little highlights of those areas. But again, if you want to see any past videos of Centralia, especially when Graffiti Highway was still uncovered, just check my playlist, which will be linked down below in the description. Then coming back through here, something I featured in my video not all that long ago is the old kind of basketball court playground area. This one's a little harder to find, especially now it's really grown in. I actually drove by it before I found it. But over here, I'll show you and Ellen, there's still the benches left over. So I got one here still intact and another one hidden in here. And directly behind here is the baseball field that I'll show you where the backstop is all right there you can see the what's left of the framing for the backstop all right so we pull over here to give Ellen a quick look at the last remaining church here in Centralia you can clearly see it is posted no trespassing the grounds and the cemetery behind it are private property I have been chasing it in the past so I'm not going to try to risk the chances of going on there again but the church is still active, it's not abandoned. It is used for select services. I'm sorry, services on select Sundays. So come here, take pictures of it, admire it, but don't try to go on the property or in the church. They will indeed press charges. So now the graffiti highway being covered up is one of the few areas you can still find graffiti that's still exposed here. And it's along one of the empty roadways on the other side across from the borough building but this wall has been covered up for a long time and also the guardrail on the other side. So if you do want to come here and find graffiti, there are still a couple areas left. I think at one point too, somebody had a JP graffiti down here. It wasn't myself or in reference to me, but I remember I found him like, oh, I guess I've been here before. This is just someone's lot where homes used to be, and it's just being reclaimed by nature. I'm right in here. Okay, so we're walking along Big Mine Run Road and trying to locate the area where the steam was coming out of the ground. We documented it and recorded it with the temperature gun. And I don't recognize the area now. It's completely transformed. So I'm going to poke around here. Hopefully I'll recognize the area. Are you okay? I didn't fall. You fell in the gravel. No, I didn't. I heard it. It was loud. You gotta get better footwear. Are you okay? Yeah. Jesus. I ripped my pants. Look at you're bleeding. Can't take you anywhere. <laughs> Jeez, that doesn't look good. Oh, come in the car, I got wipes in there.
Okay, so welcome back to a new day. You're probably wondering what's going on. So some things have transpired over the last 48 hours. I do look different. Ellen is wearing different footwear, which will explain why, and RJ's here. So where my last clip ended, I was searching for the areas of steam here, which we did locate today. While I was looking for them, Ellen was behind me along the shoulder of the road. And I heard a loud skidding sound. What happened is she was wearing like sketcher type sneakers, slid on the gravel on the side of the road and actually cut herself open pretty severely to the point where I had to take her back and she had going to the hospital the next day. If you want to see how bad the injury is, you could check her channel. She filmed her own injury. It was so bad that it was actually squirting, you know what, out of her wounds. It was pretty bad. And thankfully I was prepared in the car, I had paper towels. We kept it, you know, compressed on it, kept it elevated, got the bleeding to stop. But not only her foot, but her knee sustained some pretty severe injuries. RJ took her to the hospital and they said it was too late for her to get stitches, but they did clean the wound, you know, dressed it, whatever they did to make sure it doesn't get infected. But she is here though. She did return. She is a trooper and she is in pain, but she wants to see this trip through. But if you want to see how gory it was, just check her, her video. It will be linked down below. It was pretty bad. I'm surprised she's even here today. But with that I'm said, okay. with that said though, we are back. We did find the steam. I did bring the temperature gun. We're gonna get some readings. Despite being a summer day, around 80 degrees, kind of humid, there is still steam coming out of these holes. So it's her first time seeing evidence of the underground mine fire and I'm pretty excited to show it to her. So let's head it over there, head on over there, get some readings and we'll see what her thoughts are on it as well. So let's continue on with this journey. We're gonna let Ellen go first. So if she does fall, this time it'll be on camera. Oh, good. I'm not the only one who falls. And if you notice her, your left hand has a bracelet says fall risk. That is completely accurate. So yeah, clear evidence. It's billowing out like usual. So you know the temperatures are pretty high for it to be showing steam on a hot summer day. So we're going to do some readings here. I'm going to give you like a base temperature. So right now we're showing, okay, so it did cool off 66 degrees right here. That's the ground temperature, ambient temperature. And we're going to, we'll scan the body here and see she is 81 degrees. She is cold blooded. <laughs> and as we go in, yep, we already hit. 122 degrees, 123, and that's just showing from the hole right here. We're not really going in deep, but it maxed out 123.5. So it's roughly 60 some degrees warmer, you know, double, double the air temperature right now. And that's at the surface, the hotter, I'm sorry, the further down you go, the hotter it gets. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> Is it like a sauna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's basically like a steam room. That's what it is. It's, it's <clears throat> there's a very slight odor of sulfur, very faint, but not bad. But it smells like you know, like the, the mine tour we did. Yeah. It's, that's what it smells like. I want to get closer. You got to feel it. Will you can you yeah. hold this and foam at it? I am next to the steam now. I can definitely feel the warmth. It's close, dude. It is. It's crazy. 127, I think. Wow, it gets really hot. Yeah. You put your hand in there, which is almost You'll start sweating. So they're there, kind of experiencing it. I'm going to go a little higher, a place that Ellen's not going to be able to climb to where it's billowing out right there. That's where Mike was here last time, Mike Mount Naturing. He scanned and they got over 200 degrees. I'm gonna see if we can get anything close to that. So I'll see you up there. Okay, here we are. You can see the steam is just coming out. 
like crazy. It's really, really warm here. People often ask too, what's it smell like? It has a very small, slight odor of sulfur, more of like a damp, musty smell, typically what you find underground in mines. Have you ever been on a mine tour? It has a pretty distinct smell. That's what it smells like. So let's um, get some readings here. So remember outside temperatures in the 60s. So I'm gonna start right here. So initially we're already higher than we were down below, but where the opening is, is down here. This is where we're gonna get some really high temperatures. My hand is already starting to burn. I'm gonna hold it here as long as I can. And we're gonna watch that temperature climb. I believe 200 degrees is boiling. Ah, this is hot. Whew. Get back my hand up just a little bit. It is really, really hot. So, I'm going to give it one final push. We're going to get in there as close as we can, and I'm going to see if I can make it to 200. <clears throat> I can't do it. It's burning my hand. Just imagine touching that with your bare hands. It is very, very hot. We're getting closer. You could literally cook food here. Come on, there we go, we hit 200. I'm backing out. If I had a glove on, I could keep it there, and I, without a doubt, we would hit 250, maybe even 300 if I had my hand all the way in there. But look at it. It's covered in condensation from the sweat, from the steam. And my finger is really red. But it's amazing, though. Nothing stops it. You know, it's just burning relentlessly. No longer under Centralia, but the fire's still going. Still enough coal to burn for decades or centuries. But very amazing though. Not something you could see in everyday world. Now, I did find out too from some of my viewers and from some of my friends, there actually is another uh, coal mine fire. I believe it's Laurel Run, which is just outside of Wilkesbury. It's relatively close to home. It doesn't hold the significance of this one, and it didn't chase out any towns as far as I believe, but the fire is still burning. I did see a recent video of steam coming out of the ground, so in the near future, possibly closer to fall, when the foliage is gone, we get colder temperatures, we may do a video on that one. Not as impressive as Centralia, but an underground coal mine fire closer to home is something worth documenting, and not a whole lot of people realize, so be on the lookout for that one. If you want to see that video, definitely make sure you're subscribed, but... Now that we saw that this is still going, Ellen got to see it in person, which I'm glad. We're gonna take her down to the final spot, which is Big Mine Run Geyser. So we'll see you there in about two seconds. Okay, so here we are, Big Mine Run Geyser. I featured this many times, as you can see today, it's not flowing quite as impressively as it has in the past. We haven't had any significant rainfall recently, but I did learn a little bit of information. Last time I was here, actually, one of the neighbors lives across the street. I guess he was pulling my leg. He's like, oh, I wouldn't go near that. That goes three miles down. I'm thinking, oh, really? He's like, yeah. Well, did some digging. Not completely true. What this is, is originally an air shaft for one of the mines here in the area. The mine colliery, I think, was just uh, maybe a quarter mile down the road. And all mines have multiple points for drainage, for air. This was an air shaft used to help ventilate the mine. Mines typically, especially here in Pennsylvania, are prone to being flooded with the water table. Most mines, at least back in the day, had to run pumps 24-7 to keep the water out of the mines for the miners to be able to work. Otherwise, you would need scooper gear, which would be unrealistic. Well, anyways, once the mine operations ceased to operate anymore, they ceased operations, the pumps shut off. The pump shut off, the water level rises back up. What happens, though, is that 
the mine that they worked created all these new tunnels and cavities and areas for the water to flow both you know horizontally and, and vertically during heavy rains or significant rainfall that water has to escape somewhere it builds up pressure well what happened is that prior to them utilizing this air shaft there are subsidences there is people's basements getting water the water level that is normally at a relatively stationary point was rising higher and higher due to having more water flow from the mine activity so what they were forced to do which has happened to many places even close to home in scranton is they have what is typically a borehole that's what this is now this goes down 300 feet deep and is used to basically relieve the water pressure if this wasn't here the pressure would build back up subsidences would start happening which means the ground would open up from being eaten away from underneath and people's basements in the area would begin to get flooded again so this is basically to control water flow water pressure in underground abandoned mines that no longer have pumps to pump the water out so this runs continuously 24 7 rain or shine and as you can see it's stained orange that's called acid mine drains that's because underground when they mine they expose ore and iron and materials that were typically sealed up they mine through these areas it gets exposed to air and water turns to rust and contaminates the water so it's very acidic water you don't want to drink it you don't want to eat any wildlife that drinks the water but it's cool to look at so this is big mine run geyser it's officially 300 feet deep was originally an air shaft and now is a drainage shaft for underground abandoned mines so just wanted to share that tidbit with you now that we have the facts it's right outside of centralia basically a five minute ride and retro is somewhere down there checking it out so if you want to see what she thinks of it just check out her video okay so you guys can maybe see there's like a pheasant there i just lost him oh there he is we thought of someone walking up there he made so much noise i'm like it's either a ghost or a big animal and no it's a little pheasant or fowl whatever it is but he made a lot of noise though i'm yelling don't jump don't jump So he's up here hanging out by the steam pockets probably stays warm if it gets cold and nobody's gonna really bother him here looks pretty healthy mm -hmm. got some meat under its feathers but then i just looked down and found um yeah check this out and then you touched it well i touched the handle but i mean still I found these like medical forceps or whatever you want to call them. They're just laying on the ground. There's initials CSR. Huh. These are. Okay, guys, so that was our updated look here at Centralia in June of 2020. Overall, the town is much quieter now. Ever since they covered Graffiti Highway, there's been a lot less people. We have seen state troopers patrolling, making sure people aren't illegally parking or dumping or doing anything they shouldn't be doing. Again, much of the property here is posted. The town itself, you can still come through. It's not off limits. You can see there's tons of traffic. You're allowed to be here within the grounds of the state property. There's side roads you can park on. Just don't do anything that would draw negative attention and make a bad situation even worse. But I was excited though to show Ellen a place that she's not only heard about but has seen through my videos and now she's able to come see for herself in person do you have any thoughts you want to share about what you <laughs> <laughs> um it was quite a unique experience what he said is true i've been watching centralia videos for quite some time and just to be able to come out and experience it myself feel the steam coming out of the ground you know see these different locations where busy a busy town used to be but isn't anymore it was just it was really cool i enjoyed it and thanks jay for bringing me here that's my pleasure and unfortunately she did get hurt but now she does have scars and memories from this trip <laughs> to immortalize her trip to centralia and her first adventuring day with jp videos so don't forget down below in the description you'll find all the links to all the information we mentioned if you want to see what it looks like through her eyes i encourage you to watch her video 
If you like her content, consider subscribing. Same thing with RJ. He did do an update on well as well, even though he didn't release his first video from last time we were here. But anyways, we had a great time together. More adventures on the way with the three of us. So be on the lookout for those. Anyways, guys, questions, comments, leave them down below. If you did happen to enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And lastly, just thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.